is something so interesting about creativity that it can often get pushed to the side in our lives. But when things start to go a little awry, it's in our nature to try and seek it out again. And I'm really intrigued to see what that is. And I think that this has happened with my guest today. Hi and welcome to Creativity Uncovered. My name is Abby Gatling and I'm on a journey to uncover how everyday people find inspiration, get invented and open their imagination. Basically, I want to find out how people find creative solutions and then how they use that at home, work, play and everything in between. And my goal for this podcast is that by the end of it, you'll be armed with a whole suite of tried and tested ways to summon creativity the next time that you need it. Now, today I'm speaking with Amber Byers, who's an attorney turned award-winning author, and I'm very excited about this chat. Welcome, Amber. Hello. Welcome, Abby, and thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yes, me too. And Anna's actually um, calling in from Colorado. I am. I also realized I just welcomed you to your own show. So (laughs) I don't know if everybody's done that before, but. (laughs) Very friendly. I like it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So Amber, I'm really intrigued by your story because you are someone who sought out creativity when your career life was just not serving you as best as it could. And you had this massive, massive career change from being an attorney to now being an author and an editor and a writing coach and hosting a competition. And it seems like a really radical change. So I'd love to start about to talk about your life as an attorney and what shifted you away from that? Mm, yeah, absolutely. So I would say I it's been a process of listening to my intuition. And there's been many years where I ignored my intuition. You know, I I knew from the very first semester of law school that law was not a good fit for me. It's primarily an adversarial system where Two sides are fighting and one side is inherently set up to lose. And I'm so much more collaborative. And and so just little things like that, that started to chip away at my soul and and you just push it aside and, and continue until it finally you're like, whose life am I living if I'm not living mine? You know? Yeah. So it just continued to build up and eventually... It always, what's tricky is you can tell yourself in your mind, this makes sense. This is a logical decision. Um, You know, being an attorney is very respectable. And and yet, so while I knew it was this gorgeous, sleek black dress that looks great on other people, when I put it on myself, it just didn't fit right. And it itched on the shoulders and kind of pinched on the hips and just... You know, you try to go with it for a while and eventually, again, it just comes back to what what is it that brings me joy and what is it that um, lights me up inside? And that's when I kind of knew I needed to make a shift toward that because I had left my joy <laughs> so far behind years before. Wow. So. Oh, my gosh. That was such a cool description for that, that about mm-hmm. the dress. Because Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the time, you know, when you say, oh, this is not for me, a lot of people go, well, it is for me. Like, is there something wrong with Mm -hmm. me enjoying being an attorney, being a lawyer, being, you know, whatever my career path is. But actually it's not, it's not one size fits all. It, what's good for you does not fit them. And so what was like, you slowly sort of realizing that you, you had no joy or this wasn't sparking your joy in your career what was the actual turning Mm -hmm. point for you that made you go okay I need to change something so it had been building for a long time and I had been looking for a way out and and also I had no idea what what else can I do I still have so many student loans from law school I'm in so much debt just over my education what on earth am I going to 
how, how do I move out of this? So while all of that was necessary for the process, the turning point came when I got laid off from my law firm and it actually felt like relief to me. And as, as awful as it was to wake up the next day and realize I don't have a job, I was really grateful that I had unemployment and I had a little cushion of time to figure it out. And the one thing that I always went back to was I'm a writer. So why am I not focusing on writing? So that um, period when I was transitioning, I just started writing a book. And, and then I very quickly realized, I love this. I can do this. And so then it became, how do I support myself financially in this type of writing? Because of course I'd written legal motions and memoranda and um, whatever, you know, but to write creatively for fun was a whole different animal. So it, um, it just was a switch into how can I make this work? And, and then all the lessons that come after that. So yeah. Wow. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, the golden handcuffs, you know, when you're in this career, mm. you're, you know, you're earning good money, there's no, like, no particular one reason for leaving. And sometimes you have this mm-hmm. thing like being made redundant or, you know, you kind of need that to actually shift yeah. you out of that space. That is mm-hmm. so interesting. And so, yeah, like, is it much are there many parallels or any translations between writing, you know, for legal reasons and writing a book? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the sweetest things somebody in my old writers group told me when I showed up was, um, your legal writing experience is really going to benefit you in this new career. And it was sort of this gift to realize, oh, I'm not entirely starting over. I have, a great vocabulary. I have a great understanding of literature and the English language and how words fit together and what makes things stand out. And um, so it was, it was just tying it back into kind of my original interest from being a kid of this is um, the reading and writing and creativity and, and just thinking about things that come up in books, like all that curiosity. I was just tapping back into that innate curiosity a little bit again. So wow. that felt really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you were a bit of a writer as a kid and you explored that. And did you, and I you felt, was. did you stop while you were working or did you try and keep Yeah. That? So my mom told me that I started reading the words in picture books instead of looking at pictures when I was three. And so I've always been a huge avid reader, but um, very young child, probably elementary school. You know, I remember, I think for when I was eight that Christmas, I just printed out my, my first story that I had, you know, published on those old computer printers and, um, and sent it to my family as their gift from me. And so, you know, then it just kind of evolved into, I would write short stories. I I've saved some of them and like uncovered some, um, and some of them are just really adorable and some of them are totally wacky and I didn't really question it. You know, there was one I, I wrote, um, that I just was looking at recently when I pulled my writing stuff out of my drawer and it was all about Yarlo, the yo-yo who encountered a bully. And I was like, where, where did I even come up with that idea? Um, but I just went with it and I loved it. Um, so yeah, I've always been creating even since a young age. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And so, yeah. so then was it just, uh, that was your first choice when you, you know, were made redundant, you thought immediately writing or did you try mm-hmm. and start a couple of other things? No, that was always the thing. Anytime I was at a crossroads in life, it was, I'm a writer. I, I mean, that's just kind of the essential identity that I had. And so, well, what does that mean? What kind of things am I going to write? Am I going to publish them? How am I going to publish them? You know, then you kind of get caught up into like where I'm at now is I have been doing this for, I think, seven or almost eight years um, since I left the law. And 
when I switched and said, this is my full-time focus, this is my career now, I also inadvertently invited in this sense of seriousness into my work. Not so much pressure, a little bit of that, but more so of this writing has to mean something because I'm either going to create it and share it on my blog or share it with my email list, or it's going to be published or I'm going to submit it to a literary magazine or something has to come of this instead of just, I'm just going to play around with stories and, you know, kind of had this image of myself as a kid in my sandbox playing in the sand and was like, that's what I want to do. I just want to play around with words and not take myself too seriously. So, yeah. That's, so what did yeah. that did that change how you felt towards writing from you know initially you were just I guess playing playing with it just to try and get a bit more joy mm-hmm. in your life but then you really quickly switched to trying to make it a full-time living I guess a financial mm-hmm. player, the pressure of having to find another job I guess you didn't <laughs> want to go back to law but did that <laughs> change how you felt about it I know you said it was like not necessarily pressure but did that take some of the joy out of it or was it still there? So I think it slowly shifted. So the first the first few years I wrote, um, it took about two years for me to write and publish my first book. And that book did really well. It won a gold medal from Moonbeam Children Book Awards. Wow, and congrats. Thank you. Um, and it was such a sense of completion and a sense of validation. Like, okay, I'm on the right path. But... After that, then you're like, now what do I do? I'm an award-winning author. I I either need to write another book that's going to do equally well or better, or, you know, then the pandemic hit and things kind of stalled for a little while, but I was still, you know, what I had done financially to support my career was started to take on editing clients and writing coaching clients and hosting a writing retreat and and all things kind of circling around writing, you know, and, and then I was realized, okay, being an entrepreneur, owning my own business, developing all of these processes and all, all of the marketing for all these different things I'm doing, this can eclipse my writing too. So, so it's a really interesting balance because when you're creating you're nobody is paying you for that instantly for the most part. So it's, it became this interesting balance of, and also, you know, the, the two different sides of your brain, like going into that kind of artsy free flowing, you know, phase, and then the accomplishment, let's check this off as an entrepreneur and figuring out how do I balance both of those in a way that, that respects both sides of my brain and allows me to be the artist that I am while still running a successful company. So, yeah, 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 yeah that's true. The, having to switch between the two sides <laughs> rather than yeah. purely to stay in that creative space. Uh, yeah. But that's interesting. I suppose these are like the necessary steps you had to take so you didn't have to go back and look for another law job. <laughs> exactly. A few years in, I I retired my law license because in order to um, practice law, you know, to continue, once you get your license, you have to take continuing legal education classes and pay a fee, even if you're inactive. And, and I got to the point where I thought there's not, I cannot imagine a job that I would want to go back to the law for. So it, it felt good to let it go. And I love being an entrepreneur. I I love the clients that I work with. I I love having the connection with the community that when I reach out to. And just this spring, I also kind of um, refocused the areas that I work on and thought I'm I'm going in so many different directions and trying to grow so many different ways at once that I really need to narrow it down. And what I chose was my own writing and my writing contest, which is the Tadpole Press 100 word writing contest that um, I host and judge. So it it gave a sense of calm and and more of a balance between the two, which feels great. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You can't be pulled in so many directions. Um, now, your writing competition, that 
seems really interesting. At what point did that come in your journey? And tell me a little bit more about it. Yeah. So I had hosted two in-person writing retreats um, leading up to the pandemic. And part of the retreat was, um, they were just short three-day retreats. And for anybody who attended, they got to submit a short piece, a hundred words or less. And then they were due on, you know, Saturday night, I would take them home, read them, announce the winners um, the next day. So it was it was easy enough to incorporate into that. And when the pandemic hit and I realized, okay, in-person retreats are on pause. What can I, what can I put online? What can I take international? Um, and that's where I thought the contest piece, it could be applicable to everybody. And I put that online just as a separate um, thing. I stopped hosting retreats entirely and it just exploded. And I think the first one was um, November of 2021 that was um, online. And that one received over 500 entries from, I think, 33 different countries. And I was like, ooh, this is fun. And you get to see so many writers from all over the world. Um, So it was it's been really cool to see it grow. Our last iteration was last November. So it's every April 30th and November 30th. And that the last one, we had over 1500 entries from, I believe, 68 different countries. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. But what's interesting to me about this is that firstly, uh, you know, there's this interest in writing that is, you know, Mm -hmm obviously firing your passion at the moment, but it's not just writing, it's everything that goes around the writing. I think that is really interesting. But I think also the second thing that's really intriguing to me about what you're talking about is that when I think of writing and being an author, it seems like quite a solitary pursuit. But Mm -hmm. all of the things that you're doing, you mentioned your writer's group, um, you know, this competition, Mm -hmm. the retreats, everything seems to be really collective and part of a community. Uh, Yeah. uh, It's interesting how you've married those two up. Like, was that an intentional thing? I think at the beginning it was less intentional, but um, just something that I kind of was drawn toward. And then it was, I think, last summer that I noticed in my own self, my energy lags so much more when I'm doing things on my own, whether it's being an entrepreneur or being a writer or whatever. And then as soon as I surround myself with a supportive team and bring people together in that sense of community, then I'm like, okay, now we're now we're going someplace and just everybody's energy comes up. And so I realized community is such a crucial element that I need in my own life and my own journey as a writer and an entrepreneur. So that's when we started hosting community write-in events for the contest. So instead of, you know, most people will wait until right before the deadline to submit. But we said, if you come to just a short half hour Zoom event where we'll have some quiet writing time, and there's also bonuses of either the judges talking about what they're looking for in the pieces or we'll play a game of bingo and, um, you know, the winner will get free feedback on their piece or whatever the event is. It's it, You get to come together in community and those events also um, are include one entry into the contest. So it's just a fun way to, to remind people we're not doing this alone and true not everybody is going to win the contest but it's it's about so much more than that so it's about bringing people together and celebrating each and every writer who submits in our contest and celebrating where they are in their writing journey and and supporting and encouraging everybody which just feels lovely yes yeah do you think that was shaped by you being part of a writing group very early on realizing that that support, that support network is really important for your writing? Yeah, I do. Um, I think it, I mean, again, like, so it, it wasn't so much intentional at the beginning, 
but it was a recognition within me of this is what I'm drawn to and this is how I succeed. And and to be fair, the idea for the community write-ins wasn't mine. It was actually an idea that came from one of my um, my marketing manager I was working with at the time as a way to, you know, kind of spread out the timing of the entries and encourage people to enter earlier on in the contest and just a way to keep up the excitement and get to know the judges. And so again, it's when we come together, like I wouldn't have thought of that on my own. And it was just this idea that she came up with and was like, well, why don't we try this? And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. So it's it's like just how energy multiplies when you bring people together in a way, then more so than when I'm on my own, I just start to get slower and slower in my work and start questioning everything. And um, it's just no good for anybody. <laughs> yeah. I think that sort of reflection um, is it's so important because, it, you know, to be sustainable in your creativity, you need to know what brings you energy and what takes you away and what inspires you and what doesn't. And being able yes. to tap into that, especially if you're doing it for your career. I mean, I certainly know mm -hmm. that every day in my marketing agency, I'm expected to have idea after idea after idea for all different businesses. Yeah. But, you know, unless I'm filling my creative cup, I just, you get depleted so quickly. So it's, yeah, it's so important to be able to right. reflect on that. Absolutely. It yeah. is. It's huge. And it's, it's again, kind of knowing yourself and listening into, you know, like, obviously when I started out in the law, I very clearly recognized this is not for me. And I just kept going. But to be in a place where I can hear myself and realize, oh, I'm so much more successful when I'm surrounded by people who are supportive and whose energy excites me. Then as an entrepreneur, I can, you know, switch on a dime and say, this is what I'm going to do. And it's, it's so beautiful. So I don't, yeah, I'm just really grateful to be in a place where I can respond to the things that fill me up rather than continuously put myself out there in ways that deplete me. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's got to have the in and the out, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and this, this is such an interesting story to me because, you know, you just mentioned again that you knew that pretty early on that law wasn't for you, but you were going down this path. Mm -hmm. And then you got to a point where I got to in my career as well, where you're like, I'm too far into it. I'm earning too much money. I can't go back to the beginning again. It's all too difficult to switch <laughs> it all up. And yeah. that stopped me for a long time until I had my, you know, moment as well. Mm -hmm. But there are, um, there are so many other people who listen to this podcast who are in a similar situation. You know, they might yeah. be burnt out or they might be feeling like they're, they're just not on the path that's serving them. Hmm. reflecting back on your journey, do you have any advice or tips for people who are feeling like that and want to take yeah. that leap but are just a little bit too scared? Yes, absolutely. And what I would recommend is actually something I got from um, my last business coach I worked with and she called it the body compass where if you have this decision to make, or you have this vision that you're going for, or maybe you don't have any idea what you think or what you should do, but you kind of envision one option at a time and just close your eyes, go internal, and then just scan your body for what does it feel like when you step into this, this one option. And your body most likely is going to respond with the answer. So that can be, if it's not a good fit, it might be, you know, your shoulders hunch or a clenching in the pit of your stomach or just a feeling of darkness and constrictedness. Whereas, you know, so then you, you get that information, you can say thank you and, you know, clear it all out. And then you vision, envision the second option, do the same thing, close your eyes, scan your body, envision it, it, what you're picturing. And if it feels good and aligns, then your body might lift up a little bit. There might be a smile on your face. It might feel lighter or 
um, brighter, you know, so it could be colors or textures or whatever. Um, but when you listen to what your body says, our our body and especially our gut, which is where a lot of emotions are processed, can give us the answer. And if we just listen to that, it, it's going to let us know when you get off track, you know, and you can go a long ways off track. Like I was at the point in law where I was like, if I continue down this path, I'm going to be one of those attorneys who has a heart attack at their desk when they're 50. And, and I, I'm like, okay, we got to reel it back, you know, but then, then you find your joy and your body responds and, and lets go of that dis-ease and discomfort. So that was a long answer. (laughs) (laughs) No, but it's so true. I mean, being able to tune into your body cues is really important. But I love the idea of the body compass, just <laughs> yeah. looking yeah. from within to try and help you make that decision. But the, but I think I, for me, certainly, I knew the decision. I needed to make that decision. I actually just couldn't jump at that point. Do, and was it fear holding you back or do you know what it was? Uh, I, I think so much of it is that, um, uh, it's about earning and providing for your family that you're like, I yeah. can't really start from the beginning because I can't take that pay cut. My lifestyle is inflated so much that I need to maintain <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. But then you got to compromise. Like for me, it got to the point where I was like, what is more important, financial mm-hmm. security or my health and happiness? And then once you prioritize yourself, yeah. And, you know, I realized like, no, actually I only get one life. Why am I wasting it doing this? That was the turning point for me when I just realized yeah. I'm at rock bottom. I need to do something else. Otherwise, yeah, I'm going to also have a heart attack or stress or, you know, <laughs> whatever else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so dire exactly. before you get to jump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also kind of, you have to get to the point where you're open to considering other options because you can get kind of tunnel vision on, well, this, this is what I'm doing. So this is the only way that I can do it. But, um, yeah, it's, it reminds me too, it's a little bit of a tangent, but, um, just who you surround yourself with. Because if you're surrounding people who look fabulous in that itchy black sleek dress, you're going to be trying to cram yourself into it longer and saying, well, what works beautifully for them? Why is it not working for me? But if you surround yourself too with people who are in the industry you want to get into or who have the lifestyle or the new work industry or whatever it is you're trying to jump into, that becomes the new normal. And so then you're like, well, I can't, I can't do um, ex- any more excuses because obviously all these people are following their dreams. And I think that was actually what led me into writing was one of my childhood friends just, bam, came out as a self-published author and had started publishing book after book after book. And she was doing so great and so successful. And I was like, wait, hold up. You can just go do that? Like, it, it sometimes takes somebody chasing after their own dreams before you get that fire under your own butt to be like, I got to go get mine. Like, what have I been doing all this time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you see it, you can be it. Is that, that's the saying, mm-hmm. is it right? It yes. being inspired by others around you who are, you know, already forging that path gives you the aspiration, yeah. but also what a great uh, resource to have to bounce ideas off and, you know, Mm -hmm. just give you a bit of encouragement. I think that's really important. Absolutely. It's like Mm -hmm. encouragement and permission. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we feel like we just need somebody to give us permission to go do the things that we know will benefit us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel like there's so much guilt in, making a radical change, especially to something that you really like to do and something that's fun. Creative things are fun generally. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you give up like a boring, stable, well-paying job for something really kind of fun and frivolous. It seems like a really guilty act mm-hmm. to do. So I love the ideas about, yeah, giving yourself permission to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that we we own our own permission. We can give that to ourselves. We don't have to wait for somebody to come in and, you know, call us out and say, here's your permission. Now go go be the best version of yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I think another sort of takeaway for me from your story is that that there are so many different avenues for pursuing one particular type of creativity that you know you might love writing but doesn't necessarily mean you need to be an author mm-hmm. you've done you've done so I mean you've been an author as well but you've done so <laughs> many different things that there are so many cool avenues if you're just a bit creative about how you approach it absolutely and I do as far as creativity and um I've been thinking about that as I listen to your podcast and I love the expansive definition of it because when I am creating my company and building the writing contest, it's, it feels like a very creative act. So sometimes I'll get caught up in my head of why haven't I published more books or, you know, why, why doesn't my writing career look like somebody else's? And then I, I just remember I'm, I'm creating this company and this contest and this world around me and this team of beautiful, supportive people that is so, so wonderful and so life-giving. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. I, I definitely love it when people take this more broader view of what creativity Mm. is, and it's not necessarily just the artistic endeavors. I think Mm. being a business owner is an incredibly creative act because you're having Mm -hmm. to come up with solutions and do things for the first yeah. time and and think a little bit laterally and wear thousands of hats all the time. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, you don't just have to be pumping out books to be creative. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. All the, and if you you can delegate stuff too, but if you're the one creating all the copy for your website or for me drafting the contracts for the people I hire or the winners who win the contest, it's um, I was like, I really am writing a lot. <laughs> it's just not showing up as another book in the world. But yeah, yeah. yeah. And do each of those different tasks, do they give you different levels of uh, creative boost or do you think they're all kind of yeah. relatively equal? No, they do. And one thing that I love a ton is my blog because writing has always been almost like a thinking process for me. I'm very extroverted. And so if I'm kind of struggling with or noodling over something in my creative life and I sit down and say, okay, I'm going to write a blog post about it, it helps me process my thoughts and refine them. And then you know, so I feel better inside myself. And then I send it out to my email list and I'm at the point where I'm getting responses back from people, something that it inspired in them or a way they connected with it. And, and it just, it feels so fun and so good. It's again, that community element that, that all comes together. Ah, yes. I think creativity is such a nice connector. I I love that people are reading it and and then feeling so compelled that they have to come back to you with their their own <laughs> reflections and experience of it. That is super, super cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's funny too, because now I've moved my blog over onto my website and the way it's set up is if you want to leave a comment, you have to like sign up and create an account specifically on the website, which I find kind of annoying, but um you know, whatever. And what's amazing though, is some people do like, they are so interested by whatever piece I put out that they're willing to go. And even, I think why I'm annoyed about it is because I had to create a separate account, even though I was the one who wrote the blog. (laughs) And I was like, okay, this is silly, but whatever, we're going to work through it. Um, And so it's always like, I, I appreciate that, that little pain point that people have gone through to, to reach out that way, instead of just responding to the email when I send out the blog. Um, But yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun to see. Yeah. That's very special. And I just, in the back of my mind, I just keep having that same that you said at the beginning about law being this combative what winner loser yeah this situation that you're in now you've created this beautiful connective experience where everyone is winners and everyone is building each other mm. up and it's just so different <laughs> it it's is. so different <laughs> It's so different. And then I, I'm like, this is what I was looking for. This is that, um, uplifting and encouragement piece. Um, you know, and it's, 
it's just received so much better in the world too, you know, like, um, than trying to fit into that itchy dress and, and adhere to that professional standard and law. Um, the, the fun thing about my blog is it got voted as one of the, um, I think it's 70 best positivity blogs by Feedspot. And so it's like, it's recognized because it's so, so heartfelt and so vulnerable, um, and, and it is, it's not about tearing anybody down. I, I don't care whether you come away from first place in the writing contest or, you know, we, or are in the, be out in the initial round, we're going to celebrate you and we're going to celebrate your piece and celebrate all the effort and, um, exactly where you are on your writing journey. So that's, that's been a really powerful piece for me. Ugh, I just love that. I love that so much. And what, what's next for you? You've got, you've had this insane journey seven or eight years into your writing journey. What, what's next for you? Yeah. So it's funny because I was so gung ho last fall, I was getting ready to just start publishing again. I was like, okay, there's not that I need to, but I just have all these ideas. I was working on like six different stories and I was getting ready to publish and um, kind of got to the point where I I ended up having a bad experience with a publisher and it kind of spun me around where I realized rather than aiming to publish more and more and more, I want to pull back that creativity for my own self again and just be a little kid in a sandbox. And so every Tuesday I write just for myself and probably some of them I will share with people. Maybe it'll be traditional book type things that I share it, or maybe it'll be a little PDF I send out to my email list or sell on my website, but I just want to have fun and not take myself too seriously anymore and just be prolific about it. Um, I know that's a bit of a long answer, but so that's my writing piece. And then for the contest, we um, just hired three new judges to come on. So I'm excited to um, announce those to our community shortly. And um, we'll have our first intro meeting for all the new judges to come together later this week. And then we wrap up the next contest ends on April 30th. So it's going to be good. That's great. I love that you've given both the personal answer and your professional answer and yeah. that you're continually thinking about that creative energy and what, what is best for you. Um, that's, that's super awesome. And what I'll do is I'll actually pop the links to your competition and to your website in our show notes for this episode. So if anyone is keen to get involved, because it is an international competition, um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, you definitely can get involved in that. And thank you so much for joining me, Amber. It's been wonderful. Um, And I want to say thanks to everyone who has tuned into Creativity Uncovered today. I really hope this episode has inspired you to follow your gut and give yourself permission to follow your creativity. (laughs) And as always, I hope that it helps you summon your own creativity the next time that you need it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And um, for all the listeners who want to check out and see what we're doing in our little world, I have a special link for you, which is tadpolepress.com slash uncovered. And that'll take you in to see where our community writing events are and um, see our contest and read my blog if you're interested. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks so much. I'll pop that link in our show notes as well. Okay. Till next time. Take care. If you've made it this far, a huge thank you for your support and tuning into today's episode. Creativity Uncovered has been lovingly recorded on the land of the Cubby Cubby people, and we pay our respect to elders past, present, and emerging. 
This podcast has been produced by my amazing team here at Crisp Communications, and the music you just heard was composed by James Gatling. If you liked this episode, please do share it around and help us on our mission to unlock more creativity in this world. You can also hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any new episode releases.